Hello and welcome back to another video on the Football Zone and to my 2021-2022 Premier League predictions. Pre-season is over, the Euros are over and we're just a few days away from the Premier League kicking off and I can't wait. Lots of new teams in it this year, lots of big money being spent at the front, lots going on so let's get straight into it. And finishing bottom I have Burnley. Now I've got a bit of conf bit of concern for Burnley this year. There's been no notable signings over the summer and all the only promoted teams have um well pretty decent starting eleven so I'd be s I'd be fearing if I was Burnley at the moment. Um they've had a few good years in the Premier League but I'm just not sure if they can survive this time and I do have a bit of worry for them, especially after the end of last season. In nineteenth I've gone for Watford. Um, yeah, Watford is an interesting one. I'd probably say they're at least well equipped to the three Premier League team, championship teams coming up, despite being in the Premier League most recently, along with Norwich. Um, yeah, I just believe Brentford's recruiting model will, will do it for them. But for Watford, I do have a bit of concern. They've got some decent attacking players like Saar, but the addition to Danny Rose, uh, it's just not really too inspiring. Um, for Newcastle, I've gone 18th. Um, yeah, Newcastle at current point are the only Premier League team who haven't made any signings, and that really is um, a bit concerning for them. I know they did end the season well last year, but Steve Bruce, Newcastle fans, they just don't seem to get along. It does create a bit of a toxic environment. The takeover isn't happening. I just get the feeling that I'm going to worry for Newcastle a bit. In 17th, just escaping the drop, I've gone for Southampton. Southampton, I think you'd have to say, are in a pickle, um, having just lost Danny Ings to Aston Villa. John Ward-Prowse has also been linked with moves away. Um, yeah, they really do need to buy a few players, because they are in desperate need of some players. Otherwise, you get the feeling, especially after the second half of last season, they are in a bit of trouble. Um, but yeah, they are relying on players like Che Adams to step up this year. In 16th, I've gone for Brentford. I'm really excited about Brentford this season. Eva Antonio especially. The guy scored 33 goals in the Championship last season. I really uh, can't wait to see what they can do there. And with their recruitment model, I can really see them making some top-class signings, especially when they've made signings like Saeed Ben Marana, Ollie Watkins in the Championship, with Andy Antonio, of course. And with more money to spend, I'm really intrigued to see what they can do. And in 15th, I've gone for Norwich. Norwich have had time to prepare themselves for another season. Um, in the Premier League with the Championship. But this season, um, you kind of get the feeling they need to prove themselves. And I think they will. Um, team Pookie, of course, is their main tennis man. They've lost only one deer, but um, another team with really good recruitment. Um, you definitely back um, them to replace them appropriately. Um, and I think they're having a decent season. Um, I've gone for Brighton in 14th. Um, yeah, Brighton are an interesting one. They've got a few decent players coming through, like Lamperty and Basuma. Um, but yeah, they really do need to find a decent striker. Losing Ben White to Arsenal was a big blow, but I think they can replace him. It's just the attack, really. We've seen the XG compared to how they actually finished. If they can find um, a striker that's decent, I can really see them pushing on, because Graham Potter has definitely showed signs of a great manager. In 13th, I've gone for Wolves. Wolves are a really interesting one, um, because obviously they've lost Nuno. I know some people were surprised with that. Uh, personally, I wasn't too surprised. It kind of felt like a way of time together would come to a natural end. Um, but yeah, large. I'm really interested to see where he does. I think a lot depends on the fitness of Raul Jimenez, because we saw how downhill Wolves went last season without him. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they do, if he's fit or not. In 12th, I've gone for Crystal Palace. Now, Crystal Palace, when they appointed Patrick Vieira, I really wasn't confident about them with the amount of players leaving the club. But the early signings they've made, the likes of Michael Elise, Mark Gerhey, have really impressed me. Uh, top quality players in the Championship last season. And I'm really interested to see what they do to step up. However, with the likes of Eze injured, it will be interesting to see if Palace can survive the first half of the season while they adapt. In 11th, I've gone for Leeds. Leeds are an interesting one, to be honest. Still one of the strongest teams in the Premier League, um, with a great manager. Um, but yeah, it's the depth that kind of worries me um, for them. I just think they maybe need to add a few more additions before they can fully push for Europe again. Um, but yeah, great players like Rafinha, Patrick Bamford, I'm expecting to have no great season. It could be a decent season for them. In 10th, I've gone for Everton. Everton are an interesting one. 
Um, Rafa Benitez uh, and the situation with the fans, it really is interesting to see where that goes. If it goes well, I am a huge Benitez fan, so I think he could do a good job there. And they do have some decent players like Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Jordan Pickford, James Rodriguez, Alan, um, who could all do a pretty decent job for them this season. But will it be enough to push for Europe? I'm not so sure. In Knights, I've gone for West Brom. West um, Ham are an interesting one this season. I just realised I said West Brom, I don't West Ham. Um, but yeah, they are an interesting one. Will they be able to continue their form from last season? I think it will be tough. But, you know, they still do have some quality players. Antonio, Suchek, potentially Rice. I think Rice will stay. Um, and But they do also have Europe to contend with, which could be a bit of a bastard for them, um, which is why I'm predicting to finish slightly lower. In eighth, I've gone for Tottenham. Um, yeah, really not expecting much for Tottenham. To be honest, um, I'm not a huge fan of Nuno Santo. Um, is he good enough for the Spurs job? I'm not convinced. I'm still kind of expecting Harry Kane to leave before the window ends as well. And, yeah, they probably leave it too late for a replacement. The club just seems a bit of a toxic place at the moment. I do have big fears over them. In seventh, I've gone for Aston Villa. While they have lost Jack Grealish, I have still been very impressed with some of the signings they've made so far. Danny Ings is a great pick-up up front. Uh, Leon Bailey, I really rate him. Uh, Emmy Brandier, friend of championship. He's been very solid um, or was outstanding last season as well. So they do have a very good squad. And then they've got existing players like Emmy Martinez and go, what a revelation he's been. I think it could be a solid season for Villa. Six, I've gone for Arsenal. Arsenal are an interesting one this season. Um, obviously had a really bad season last year, but you get the feeling no Europe this year could really help them. And they've also made a few solid additions to Ben White, who's been pretty solid uh, for Bryce. I'm really looking forward to seeing how he progresses. And then a few decent options like Nuno Tavares. And there's also talk of a midfielder coming in, but nothing at time of recording. So yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic for Arsenal. In fifth, I've gone for Leicester for the third season in a row. I don't think it'll be missing out on the Champions League having controlled the top four all season like it has been for the recent seasons because I think the top four is just so strong this year. But I still think it'll be another decent se season for Leicester. However, they have been harmed by injuries to Wesley Fofana and James Justin. It will be interesting to see how they um, cope without them. Um, but yeah, ho I'm still back in to have another pretty solid season. In fourth, I've gone for Liverpool. Now, Liverpool, I do have some concern over, I can't lie. Virgil van Dijk and Joe Gomez have obviously been out for a long time and you do have to question, with the seriousness of their injuries, whether they will be the same player. Um, and they've only brought in one player so far, Konate. I do think he's a pretty decent signing, um, but it'll be interesting uh, to see if they can really cope with the top three, with the amount of money they're looking like they're going to spend. In third, I've gone for United. Uh, United in third, I think they're only dropping behind Chelsea because of the strength of that Chelsea team under Tuchel. But Jaden Sancho and Raphael Varane so far in for United is just really um, exciting. And maybe they still do need a CDM, maybe a few other cover positions too, to properly compete with Man City and Chelsea. But still, I'm expecting a pretty decent season for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's men and hopefully a trophy too. In second, I've gone for Chelsea. Now, at the time of recording, there's heavy rumours that Romelu Lukaku could be on his way to the bridge. And for me, that'd be a great sign. And that's one of the main positions they're missing. And we've seen what a revolution Thomas Tickle was um, towards the end of last season. Um, and I think he can continue it. There's no reason why he can't. Um, obviously, defending European champions. Will it be enough to compete with Man City? I don't know. But I'm definitely expecting this to be a lot closer. And in first, of course, I've gone for Man City. Um, yeah, how can you bet against them? Win winning so many trophies last season, just utterly dominant, and you'd be a very brave man to bet against them, especially with Jack Grealish coming in, that's a great signing, and you just look at the players behind the striker, it's just scarily good, and then rumours of Harry Kane as well, I do think he will join, and to be honest, that will probably make City unstoppable, uh, and would you even bet against them winning a quadruple? But anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Remember to like, share, subscribe, let me your thoughts, comments down below, and follow me on Twitter, link in the description below for daily football news, and subscribe to my channel on the screen right now. That would be greatly appreciated. Thanks very much for watching. Peace.